we're going to start with these subroutines or procedures. So this was our and or not implementation of the majority function. But we mentioned that we could take ands, ors, and nots and convert them exclusively to nands. And the way that we kind of imagined that we would do this was something like that, where we said, since I know that I can convert nots into nands, and I can do and with nands and nots, where that not can be converted into a nand, I can do nands with only ands, and so forth. So we kind of had this implicitly that we were thinking about things as having these other procedures, where because we were only allowed to use NAND, we needed a procedure to do NOT, since we didn't directly have that. And since we didn't directly have AND, we needed a procedure to do that, and so forth. Where maybe as part of that procedure, we wanted to use this other procedure for NOT. So that was not something that was naturally part of our computing model, so let's add that. We didn't naturally have this ability to define other functions and then use them later. So we're going to add that in. We're going to add in these procedures, these subroutines, the ability for the user to name their own procedures in this case. So in order to do this, what we're going to need to show is kind of like when we talked about when we gave a procedure for how I could take an and or not straight line program and convert that into an exclusively NAND straight line program. What I had to do was give a procedure for how I could substitute every, let's say, or for exclusively NANDs, for just NANDs. So we're going to do a similar thing here. I'm going to show how I can take some sort of program that has these procedures in it and convert it into a program without the procedures that computes the same function. So it'll behave identically, but does not have those procedures. Before we jump all the way to majority, which was a pretty complicated one, a relatively complicated one, right now I have and. I'm trying to write the and function with my NAND straight line program, and I've used as a procedure not. So the question is, how can I convert this program here that uses not into one that only uses nands. The idea is that when I computed that not, I could substitute in the body of this procedure, whatever that was. Every place I saw this not, I would substitute in all of the statements that were part of the body of this procedure, making sure that when I used certain variables, I only used variables that kind of had fresh names, names that I hadn't ever seen before, so we don't get overwriting accidentally or that sort of thing. Right here, it doesn't matter because we don't actually have any variables and not. We're just directly returning the result. So in this case, I can simply substitute NAND temp temp where I saw not of temp. We're going to have this procedure for translating procedures. If we have code with procedures, we're going to have our own procedure. We're basically writing our own algorithm for how I can translate that into an equivalent program that does not have any procedures in it. Here is majority. My goal is I have this program that's got where I have three procedures, not, and, and, or. And I want to remove all three of those procedures so that I'm computing the majority function using exclusively NANDs. So that's my goal. How am I going to do that? So basically, every single time I use some procedure, I'm going to sort of paste in the body of that procedure where I used it. Once I paste that in, the parameters that I had inside that procedure, I'm going to remove those and substitute in the arguments I had when I called that procedure. For instance, here I called the procedure AND on A and B. So when I copy in the body of AND, uh, this is a bad example because we have the same variable. Let's talk about this one where I have B and C. So when I copied in the body for AND over here, every place I saw an A when I copied this in, I would write B instead. And every place I saw B, I would write C instead. Because those were the arguments I gave for these parameters. So substitute the, the parameters for the arguments I used in that invocation. And then I would also need to make sure that I have this temp variable in here. And as you can see, I have like multiple ands. Which means that I'm going to end up with multiple temps 
just to make sure I don't even have to worry about me getting kind of contamination of these variables, since this and is assuming that there is only that one temp variable, uh, and a different and might, might kind of mess it up. Just to make sure that we don't have any issues with that, I'm going to make sure that when I do that substitution, all the variables inside the body have unique names. So I'm going to rename all of the variables within the procedure body so that they're sort of fresh variables. They're new names that I've never seen before. Let's do an example of this with our majority function. So let's kind of see how this works. So here I have that same code that is computing majority. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to remove not. So I'm going to make it so that uh, I can just not have that procedure not anymore. So how can I rewrite everything that used not so that it's not using not before? So what I'm going to do, uh, our procedure said I paste in. So instead of using not here, I'm going to paste in the body of not. In this case, that was NAND AA. But I need to make sure that I substituted the variables that were used inside the body so that the parameters that were used inside the body for the argument we gave. So since we were computing not of temp, A was understood to be temp inside this body, so I want to replace temp here. And now this is computing the same function, the same and, but now without nots. And now we can repeat the same thing here. I can do here, this should be NAND of A with A, and then this should be NAND of B with B. So now I have completely defined majority without using not at all. So I have eliminated the need for that subroutine. And now hopefully if we run this, we'll still get the same result. So here we are calling that on one zero zero, so the majority is not one, so we're getting the right answer. So the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to try to eliminate and. So we've eliminated not, so now let's, let's eliminate and. This one's going to be a little bit more complicated, because there's more stuff involved. So let's go ahead and I'm going to comment out this code so we get red highlighting where all the ands are. So I need to compute the value for and one, but now without using and. The value of and1 needs to be assigned to the return value, what the return value for that and was, and then I need this line of code beforehand in order to compute that thing. Now, in order to make sure that this, is, that this variable isn't going to interfere with any other variables that I might have had within my program, I'm just going to make sure that this has a unique name. So maybe I'm going to say that this is the first ands temp. That way I just know that it's something fresh, that I've never used this before. And now I can change, I need to change these to match. So now I've removed that first and, and I can do something similar for these others. So I can say that I need and2, and2 temp is going to be equal to nand, and in this case I'm using b and c. And now I can do NAND on AND2 temp with AND2 temp. And finally, the same for the last one. So the AND3 temp is equal to the NAND of A with C. And then AND3 is going to be equal to NAND on AND3 temp, NAND on AND3 temp, and and three temp. And unless I made mistakes in this translation, we should now have majority without using any ands. So we got the right answer again. Okay, so we're going to move on. If you feel like you really want to see, or you can come see me after class, and I would be happy to go over that with you. But for now, let's go to the next thing. Okay, so we mentioned that in our original translation for how we could go from our straight line programs to gates, every single line in our program became one gate. That is not necessarily going to be the case anymore. Once I have these procedures, so we've added in this syntactic sugar of procedures, 
but we have lost this property that every single line is a gate. So it is not necessarily the case that we could just say like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven is the number of gates it's going to take for us to do majority if we implement it in this way and try to convert that into a circuit. The reason for that is because once we do this translation so that we have our procedures, we substitute out our procedures, each of these procedures might represent multiple gates. So each of these ands was actually not one gate, it was two. We can see that over here. That was two gates. So each of these represents two. Each of these represents three gates. So if we were to actually figure out how many gates are we using for majority when we have these procedures, the best we can guarantee, at least right now, is we would have uh, two for each and, and then three for each or. So that is six for the and, six for the or, so 12 gates. If we're starting to talk about what is the efficiency of this, how much time is it going to take, what, could, what resources do we need in order to compute our function, that has changed. This is one of these cases where we have kind of changed the efficiency of things uh, based on just our syntactic sugar, how efficient that translation might be from our syntactic sugar. So now we have procedures. Our straight line programs have procedures now, and we know we haven't changed our compute model.